and welcome to your video guide to assembling and enjoying your new Sunshine Garden House. By watching this program, you'll get the knowledge you need to successfully assemble your garden house, plus tips for making the construction go more smoothly. Now here's your first tip. Get a friend to help you. Assembly does take two people. While many people can complete the assembly in just a few hours, you may want to split the work over two days and a weekend. While much of your garden house is pre-assembled, let's take a quick look at the tools you'll need for final assembly. The primary assembly tool is the Phillips head screwdriver. Now, take a tip from professional assemblers. Use a power screwdriver or a power drill like they do with a star Phillips head screwdriver bit. You'll also need a six to eight foot step ladder, a hammer, safety glasses for eye protection, a 12-foot tape measure, and work gloves to protect your hands. And while optional, three tubes of silicone-based clear caulk to seal the joints and glazing. Before you start your assembly, make sure the site for your garden house is prepared. Make sure you locate the garden house at least five feet from any adjoining structure or property line or follow your local building code. This means that you have a space at least 8 foot by 12 foot that's level, clear of debris, and ready to go. See your printed instructions about anchoring your garden house to concrete, wood, or other surfaces, and make sure the anchors are in place before you start your assembly. It's also a good idea to have a clear space in which you can lay out the shipping cases and unpack your materials. Keep materials from the packages together because it'll make them much easier to locate during the assembly process. Let's take a look at the materials in the seven boxes. There are three lengths of screws used to assemble your garden house. Make sure you use the correct screw for the correct application. Three quarter inch, one and a quarter inch, and the two and a half inch size. Our first task is to pre-assemble 12 foot lengths, and here's how. Let's start with the sidewall base lengths. The eight foot portions are in box number four, and the four foot portions are in box number six. Find part A of the sidewall base and match it to its mating part A. Attach them together by driving in one and a quarter inch screws, these are the medium length screws, through the metal connectors and into the wood. Here's a tip. While you want solid construction, tighten screws only until snug. 
It's easy to over tighten screws when using a power screwdriver or drill. Do the same with the 8 foot and the 4 foot sidewall base pieces mark part B. The sidewall top plate 12 foot lengths are next. Matching part A to part A for the sidewall top plate Bring them together like this and connect them by driving in one and a quarter inch screws through the metal connectors and into the wood. Get the five trusses from box number five and the ten rafters from box number three and take them to a level pre-assembly area. Lay two rafters and a truss out like this. Attach the rafter to the truss through the metal plates by using two one and a quarter inch screws. Use a two and a half inch screw through the pre-drilled hole in the rafter to further attach the rafter and truss. Turn over the rafter and truss pre-assembly and drive in screws as on the other side. Your roof truss should look like this. Now, repeat the procedure four more times, making a total of five roof truss assemblies. Start by laying out the sidewall bases. These are the two longer pieces that you've pre-assembled, and the front and back wall bases on your prepared level surface. In each corner of the garden house bases, there are metal connectors that look like this. One corner at a time, arrange the connectors at each corner so it faces out. Place the small wooden block, labeled stub, in the corner to make sure that you have enough room to insert the corner post later. Get out your power screwdriver and some one and a quarter inch screws. Drive the screws into the connector and the wood like this. Now, 
Take your stub with you and assemble the next corner. Then go on to the third and last corner to complete the base assembly. Make sure the baseboards are square and level by doing this. Measure diagonally from corner to corner and then the other set of diagonal corners. If, if one diagonal is more than a half inch shorter than the other, give the short diagonal a little tug and measure again. It is critical that the base be level and square. From box number three, get a back wall panel and take it to the assembly area. Place a back wall panel into position like this with the connectors facing inside your garden house. Slide the corner post into its metal corner. Note that there may be a piece of tape on some of the connector holes. Do not put screws through these holes. Use the untaped holes only. Get some one and a quarter inch screws and fasten the back panel to the base like this. Now, put in the other back panel and secure it with one and a quarter inch screws. Like with the rear panels, now get a front panel and put it in place and secure it using one and a quarter inch screws. And put the other front panel in place like this. Securing it with one and a quarter inch screws. From your pre-assembly area, locate the sidewall top plates you connected earlier and take both of them to the assembly site. Make sure you stagger the location of the splice on the sidewall top plate with the splice on the sidewall base plates. Place the sidewall top plate here, like this, and see how it's lined up. Using one and a quarter inch screws, attach the sidewall top plate like this. Want to make sure this is flush. Drive the screws only into the open, untaped holes. Now, do the same on the other side of your garden house. From box number five, get two triangular shaped panels. Holding the rear top panel like this, Set it into place with the connectors facing in. Make sure there's a continuous line from the top panel and rear panel. Using one and a quarter inch screws, 
fasten the top rear panel in place like this. On each side, align the panel with the roof line. Fasten it in place by driving two and a half inch screws through the pre-drilled holes on each side. Now, get the top front panel and set it in place, making sure it is properly fitted. Using one and a quarter inch screws through the connectors, fasten it in place. On each side, align the panel along the roof line Flush. Yep. and fasten it in place by driving a two and a half inch screw into each of the pre-drilled holes. From box number three, get the back wall stud, and while we're at it, get the stud spacer from box number five. Position the spacer at the top of the rear wall and set the back wall stud into place. Attach the stud through the metal connectors using three quarter inch screws. Then move the spacer down to the bottom to make sure that the back wall stud is properly aligned and attach the stud through the metal connectors again using three quarter inch screws. From box number four, get the ridge front and ridge back. While our assemblers are measuring marks for the installation of the roof trusses that you've pre-assembled, note that these positioning marks have been precisely made for you at the factory. Position a roof truss assembly at the center of the positioning mark that you've located on the sidewall top plate here. Attach it using three quarter inch screws but to the untaped metal connector holes only. Install the front roof ridge by resting it, connectors down on the top front wall and center truss. Make sure the front roof ridge is flush with the front wall. Fasten the ridge to the front wall, attaching it through the connectors using one and a quarter inch screws. Squeeze the rafters into the connectors of the front roof ridge. Make sure that they're firmly seated and even. Secure them using one and a quarter inch screws. Install the back roof ridge by sliding it, connectors down, into the center truss connector, and resting it on the back top wall. Make sure the back roof ridge is flush with the back wall. Fasten the ridge to the back wall, attaching it through the connectors using one and a quarter inch screws. 
Now, seat the remaining four roof trusses fully into their connectors. Secure each roof truss to the sidewall top plate centered on their marks using three-quarter inch screws and untaped holes. Attach each roof truss to the ridge, again making sure they're fully seated using one and a quarter inch screws. At this point, your garden house should look like this. The sag and the roof ridge and the sidewall top plates is natural until the sidewalls are put in place, which is what we'll do next. From box number one, locate five sidewall panels and the six sidewall panel from box number five and take one of them to the assembly site. The wall panels are all identical. With the metal connectors facing in and the metal angle connectors at the top, slide the side wall panel snugly over into position. Drive two and a half inch screws in the two pre-drilled holes at the corner. Make sure the corner stays flush. Fasten the top of this first panel through the metal connector using one and a quarter inch screws. And fasten the bottom as well. Position the second sidewall panel at the edge of the first panel. Drive two two and a half inch screws just halfway into the two pre-drilled holes at the joint. Position the third sidewall panel on this side like this. Can we come in there and hold it? Go ahead and anchor that bar bottom. Drive two two and a half inch screws just halfway into the two pre-drilled holes at the corner. I'll hold it in place when I put in the uh, next screws. Yep. Okay. From the inside, drive four two and a half inch screws into the pre-drilled holes at the joint of the second and third wall panels. Sucks that right in. Finish securing the side walls to the top plate by using one and a quarter inch screws driven through both sets of metal connectors. And secure the side walls to the base plate through the metal connectors using one and a quarter inch screws. Also remember to finish driving in all the screws that you started driving halfway in on the inside of the greenhouse. Repeat this procedure for the side walls on the other side of your garden house.
from box number three, locate two back vent panels and take one of them to the assembly site. Slide the back vent panel snugly up into position so the vent will swing freely at the base. Use a long two and a half inch screw. Fasten it at the top like this. Now, use four more two and a half inch screws to fasten the vent panel into place through the pre-drilled holes. Repeat the process to install the other back vent panel. How's it look? Good. Nice flush. Ready for the top? Screw. Yep. Okay. Flush on the outside. Check over your work now before you continue to make sure the roof panels will fit. Make sure the sidewall top plates are square and level, and the roof ridge should also be square and level with no sag. If everything does not appear to be square and level, adjust it now before continuing. From box number two, locate the four roof panels, and from box number seven, two vented roof panels. Please note, roof panels are not interchangeable. They are not identical. Start by installing the vented side of the roof first. Locate the vents on the side of the roof away from the prevailing summer wind. From the side of the garden house, Lift the two-foot front roof panel above the ridge near the front wall and let it slide down until the metal angles rest on the ridge. Position the panel to overhang the front wall by three quarters of an inch. Secure the panel with two and a half inch screws through the six pre-drilled holes. Take the vent flashing and attach it to the top edge of the vented roof panels using number two nails gently hammered in through the four holes. Need to be flush on this side? With a helper, 
Lift the vented roof panel above the roof ridge and let it slide down until the metal angles rest on the ridge. Slide the panel against the front roof panel. Secure it in place through the six pre-drilled holes along the sides and the one in the center using two and a half inch screws. Lift the second vented roof panel above the roof ridge and let it slide down until the metal angles rest on the ridge. Slide the panel against the first vented roof panel. Using two and a half inch screws through the six pre-drilled holes, secure the panel. Further secure the roof panels to the roof by driving two and a half inch screws through the roof ridge and into the panels from the inside like this. Lift the two foot rear roof panel above the ridge near the front wall and let it slide down until the metal angles rest on the ridge. Position the panel to overhang the front wall by three quarters of an inch. Then, secure the panel with two and a half inch screws through the six pre-drilled holes. Now, we'll roof the other side of the garden house. With the aid of a helper, lift a four-foot front roof panel above the ridge near the front wall and let it slide down until the metal angles rest on the ridge. Position the panel to overhang the front wall by three-quarters of an inch. Secure the panel with two and a half inch screws through the six pre-drilled holes. Lift the four foot center roof panel above the ridge and again let it slide down until the metal angles rest on the ridge. and secure it with two and a half inch screws through the six pre-drilled holes. Lift the four foot back roof panel into place, letting it slide down until the metal angles rest on the roof ridge. and slide it over to position it so it overhangs by three quarter of an inch. Secure the panel with two and a half inch screws through the six pre-drilled holes. Now, go inside the garden house and secure the unvented roof panels through the three pre-drilled holes using two and a half inch screws. From box number four, 
Locate the vent operator parts. Place the black cylinder portion of the vent operators in the refrigerator, not the freezer, for about an hour to make them easier to install. Center the vent operator bracket on the roof vent frames like this. Using one and a quarter inch screws, attach the brackets. Center the vent operator brackets on the rear vent frames like this. Has it been about an hour? Good. Get the black cylinders, the pistons, from the refrigerator. Place the piston through the threaded bolt and into the sleeve with the sleeve pointing down. Insert the pin in the outermost holes of the sleeve and piston. To detach the automatic operators for manual operation or to prevent opening, simply squeeze the sidebars together and release them from the bracket. Make sure the vent system is allowed to operate freely to keep from damaging the pistons. From box number three, locate the last remaining wooden parts, the wind stops, and take them to the site. Center the top wind stop three quarters of an inch into the door opening and secure it with one and a quarter inch screws. Now, affix the wind stops to the sides of the door, butting them up into the top wind stop like this. At the rear vent opening, center the top wind stop three quarters of an inch into the rear opening and secure it with one and a quarter inch screws. Now, affix the wind stops to the sides of the rear vent, butting them up into the top rear stop, letting them overhang by three quarters of an inch. Secure them with one and a quarter inch screws. One last step, install your door hardware.
That completes your assembly of your Sunshine Garden House. We know you'll enjoy it for many, many years to come.